Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, you know, over the years, I've made a ton of different gates, and usually, no two gates are alike. They're all different in their own individual way, and today is no exception. You know, I've been getting some comments over the years in the comment section, people asking all kinds of questions like, why don't you ever make an aluminum gate? Well, I've never really thought about that. It's just something I've never done. But today's a first. We're gonna make an all aluminum gate. Although it'd be small, only four feet wide and about four feet tall, but it's gonna be all aluminum, all the way to the hinges, which are gonna be aluminum as well. We're gonna talk about, during the course of the build, I'm gonna talk about the advantages and disadvantages of having and building an aluminum gate. Should be a fun project. Let's get started on today's video. Today's video is sponsored by King Metals. They've got all your fabrication needs in one location. From hinges to hardware, balusters to metal decor, brass to aluminum, and a whole lot more. You name it, they've got it. Check them out today at kingmetals.com. Now let's get back to today's video. Okay, so here's where the gate's going to be going. It's going to be going in this section right here. Now there's a couple things to look for. The first thing you want is you want a solid mount for both posts for the gate. In this case, we've got the house right here. No problem. We'll be able to anchor it to the house and anchor it to the ground. And this is the side it's going to be hinged on. So this is going to be good. However, the other side, I've got nothing solid to work with right here. I just got the base that will be anchoring it to the ground. And there's nothing that I can anchor over here. Now this is going to be the latch side. So we're going to have to do some special stuff, maybe some gussets on the bottom of that, to stiffen this post up over here. Although it's not too terribly important because it's just a latch side. And I want to take, I want, I want to tell you that this is actually just a temporary solution. Uh, this is just to stop my grandkids from wanting to run into the shop and see grandpa all the time and keep them in the play area over here. They just keep wanting to run through here. So we're going to put this gate up here temporarily for that reason. So I think it's going to be fine. It'll be a solid hinge mount from the, from the house and the latching point. I'll make it as stiff as I can and I'm sure that it'll be okay. All right, so since this is aluminum, the very first thing I want to do is switch out uh, my metal cutting blade to an aluminum cutting blade. And, um, you know, that's one thing I would suggest if you're cutting a lot of aluminum, you definitely should put an aluminum cutting blade on there. Uh, it definitely, that what happens is there's more teeth on there and it doesn't gum up like it would if, it, if you're cutting aluminum on a metal cutting blade. It just seems to gum up. All right, I got aluminum blade on there. And I don't know if we, if I noticed, if you noticed or I mentioned, there's a little bit of angle on the concrete and it comes out to be about 15 degrees. So I've set my table right there, my angle at 15 degrees and I'm cutting the posts right here. Uh, and then we're going to end up welding some flat plates on the bottom and hopefully my 15 degrees is, is fairly accurate uh, from what we need. All right, send it back now to... Uh, um, to the square position and I'm just cutting them at 90 degrees right there and this is the uh, quarter inch by four inch flat plate and this is what I'm going to be using for the bases and we're going to only need two and then I've got some inch and a half by quarter inch flat bar I just happen to have this laying around and this is going to end up being the caps for the tops of the posts all right, so I want to drill out uh, the holes for the mounting, and uh, they're going to be a little bit different here. So this is the uh, latch post. It's going to be kind of freestanding out there. Uh, I'm kind of hoping by just just mounting it by this, it's going to be strong enough, and I don't have to get into any kind of, any other modifications. So four holes will mount the post in the center. This is the post that's going to be up against the uh, uh, the house. So I'm just putting two holes in it, and then I'll be mounting the post at the back side of that uh, plate. Just deburr them a little bit and then over to the Burr King, kind of round the edges, kind of round, it, uh, round them off, smooth them up a little bit. And the first order of operation is welding the, uh, the caps on the top of the tops of the post. All right, so this is aluminum, so I am operating off of the HTP Invertig 301 here. And let me see if I can remember some of the settings. I know I'm right at about 100 hertz right here. 
and we're using a 332nd inch tungsten and the filler wire is 332nd uh, 4043 aluminum and that's what I'll be using throughout the uh, throughout the process right here so you know one thing about aluminum uh, like I said you know I, I've never made an aluminum gate before but I can tell right away so so you know there's different ways of, of, of welding aluminum obviously a conventional TIG way right here or if you had a spool gun or a push-pull gun or I actually have um, a, you know aluminum MIG set up but I'm limited with that process so um, I'm going to be using the old conventional way right here and that's with a foot pedal um, probably could be done with a spool gun or something like that if, if you had something like that I just don't have that so this is the way we're doing it so the first thing like I said I'm welding the cap on look at this the filler wire right here right down to about an inch left Look how small. That's no waste going on right there. All right, and then these are the base plates right here. And so uh, one thing, too, that I noticed is, you know, since this is quarter-inch material, the base plate and the tubes themselves are inch and a half by 120 wall thickness. So it takes a little bit. I'm just using straight argon. So it takes a little bit to preheat it a little bit to uh, get that uh, aluminum to start to puddle up a little bit before you introduce the filler wire. So I noticed that uh, during the during the build of this project that there was a lot of uh, uh, preheat going on in order to do that now I do have uh, different gas I've got uh, helium helium argon mix that I use and that works pretty good uh, I just didn't want to swap over uh, to that to that gas uh, this is just gonna work out pretty good for me all right just finishing this up right here and there we go this is the one that the post is going to be at the very back right here. And you can see it just takes you a little bit to that preheat to get going a little bit before you can actually start welding. So I guess I can talk a little bit about the, uh, the disadvantage. One of the disadvantage factors here is the time it's going to take to weld this project together using a TIG method like this with the foot pedal. And you'll see a little bit later on in this video how I'm going to have to drag the pedal around with me everywhere I go. And again, we can talk about different options as well. Some, some torches have a push button on them or you can have a slide switch installed. Um, I, I have the slide switch, but I don't have a push button. so. Uh, I'm just going to go with it uh, just like this. So I am going to grind this down. This is the top caps, and you can see a little bit of beeswax on the flap disc right there does wonders uh, from clogging up uh, the flap disc. That uh, works out really good and grinds aluminum really well. It's a little trick. Definitely beeswax works well. Now, I'm not getting too perfect with this. I'm just trying to uh, smooth it off since this is going to be the top of the gate, and one of them is going to be the latch side, so it, that latch is going to be right near the top. All right, into my new toolbox right there. And uh, I've got a Champion hole saw kit right here and I'm drilling a one inch hole in. And that's for the mounting purposes. Okay, so with my two posts made, before we can make measurements for the gate, we have to do a couple of things. We need to have two fixed surfaces, which I have the house right here as a solid surface. But what I don't have as a solid surface is this side over here. So therefore I've mounted this post right here and I've got it plumb in both directions. So we have now a solid fixture on this side and we know that the house is solid. However, the house is out of plumb slightly. You can see that I made a little spacer on the back side of this post right here and it is gonna be mounted right up against the bottom and right up against here. Now, I've double checked it and when it is mounted in place like this, it is in plumb in both directions. So with that, we know that we're going to have a solid surface to be able to measure from so we can make accurate measurements for our gate. So what I have here now is 51 and a quarter inches from post to post, top and bottom, and 47 inches from the ground to the top of the post. So with that, we're gonna go ahead and make our calculations and our adjustments so we can make our gate. Let's get started. All right, so now that we've got an idea about our gate size and dimension, one thing I want to note, the reason why I did not mount the post up against the house is because we're going to have to weld the hinges on that post to be able to hang the gate. That is why that post did not get mounted to the house. 
but it got held up there. I know exactly where it's gonna go when it's mounted. That's how we made those dimensions. And again, once I said, that dimension was 51 and a quarter inches. So I make my adjustments allowing 3 eighths of an inch gap for the hinge and 3 eighths of an inch gap for the latch. That brings us down to 50 and a half inches and the height was 47 inches. I'm going to give 2 inches of gap on the bottom of the gate to 45. So 51 and a half, 50 and a half by 45. That's going to be our gate size for an inch and a half square tube frame and then our pickets will go in the middle of that. So let's get these things cut up and get this gate finished. All right so now that I got all my dimensions figured out it's time to cut the frame and again this is inch and a half uh, square tube 120 wall thickness. I got the saw set at 45 and I'm just down cutting all the pieces the four pieces that I need to create the, the frame of the gate. Well, I tell you that aluminum blade works wonders. Um, definitely, uh, definitely have one of those installed if you're doing a lot of aluminum cutting. All right, with the table dogs in place, it's time to start to put the frame together. And this is the way I like to do it. I like to get a perfect 90 degrees, clamp everything down, and then go ahead and get the frame put together. And once I do that, check for square. In this case, we're right on the money right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and start tacking this frame together. You notice I've got it clamped in every corner and every way, so uh, it's not gonna move around. All right, so there's those two. You can see me picking up the pedal, and I gotta move this around to the other side. Sure is a lot different. So it takes a lot more time to weld aluminum frames together. Another disadvantage is the cost. Now I got a comparison, aluminum versus metal and aluminum was exactly twice as much as what the mild steel or the metal would have been to do this so again um, time disadvantage you're talking about a lot of time to weld and put this together and then cost cost is uh twice as much so i don't know that i'll be doing too many aluminum gates <laughs> but i had to try it i had to do it once so um, so far it's okay Smaller gates, I guess, um, will be fine. I couldn't imagine building a big gate. Wow. All right, for the corners right here, I like to just to fuse it together. They're really a tight fit, so um, it worked out pretty good. I just fused that right on down, and that, uh, that worked good for the corners. And for the inside corner, it's just going to set it up and clamp it down. And I'm just going to go all four corners just like this right here. You know, I got to say, once uh, once I started going, I kind of got the hang of things a little bit. And just when you get the hang of things, this frame is going to be done and you're beyond to something different. And uh, in this case, we'll be putting the pickets in. You'll see that here in a minute. All right, so the pickets of choice is half inch solid square aluminum bar. And uh, here I'm cutting four at a time right here. I got the dimensions I need. And I'm just going to clip these up. And I think I need like 11 pieces or 12 pieces to make it across this gate. All right, I'm just laying them in place here. Just to be sure everything fits. Now, if you notice, if you notice right here, everything's dropping into place and fits really nice right now. So I'm starting to weld up here and you can see I've got my spacers in there and uh, I'm going three and three quarter inch spacing between these. and. Um, I got the first one in, and now the second one is going in. And again, here's the disadvantage. You can only do one at a time. So every single picket, I'm having to get the foot pedal and take it to the other side of the table and just do the same thing. But here's where things are starting to get a little bit tight. So what's happening is as I welded those first two pickets in, the gate frame is starting to draw in, and it's getting tighter. Now, I, I do have this problem sometimes with metal, but I'm able to put a couple of pickets in the center part to keep it, keep it spread apart. But I tried this with this, and it didn't seem to, it just did not seem to uh, to work like that. So ultimately, um, what I had to do is is shave a little bit off these pickets right here, and uh, they really fit in. When I say a little bit, about a sixteenth of an inch, uh, no more than that. But back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this on the welding uh, definitely took some time. And, uh, you know, 
Uh, definitely probably twice as long as it would have been if I was doing it, uh, you know, with some steel. All right, so what are the advantages of aluminum? Well, weight is one, all right, super lightweight. Um, you know, paint, the, you, you don't really need to paint it uh, or powder coat it. Uh, you, you can, uh, but you don't need to. Uh, it's aluminum, so it's non-corrosive. So, you know, this would work good at the ocean or down by the beach where there's a lot of salt, um, I would imagine, because uh, metal has a tendency to corrode quickly down there with the salt in the air. Even if it's painted or powder coated uh, or aluminum, you probably wouldn't have that so much. So those are the advantages there. I'm 20 miles from the ocean, so I don't have that. Uh, I don't have that problem. But uh, if you live close to some water, to the ocean, uh, maybe that would be something you might want to consider. All right, so what's happening here, and this is uh, what I've, I've talked about this in my previous uh, videos, is when you're putting pickets in like this, what you have to be careful of is the picket's starting to wander it off. So it's important you start checking your measurements. Uh, when you're getting about this place right here, you'll see it. Once I get this picket in right here, this is one of the ones I was having a hard time with. I finally got it uh, where it needed to be. And then I think from this point on is where I start measuring. And sure enough, I was off about three eighths of an inch. And so this is where I had to start making adjustments. And so you want to start making your adjustments when you're about four or five pickets out. So it's not so obvious. You know, trust me, I learned the hard way. I've built a gate before to where I was, I, I, when I was done with it, they looked like they were on an angle. And that's how I learned. I made one mistake. And then from that point on, um, this is how... I, I double check my measurements and be sure that I make the adjustment before I get towards the end of the of the gate. You can see I'm making that adjustment right there. <clears throat> I'm not getting it all at one time. Like I said, it was about three eighths of an inch at this point, so I'm just taking about an eighth or <clears throat> an eighth or so, and that's something you're just not going to notice. I mean, if that, once this gate is done and stood up and, and in place, nobody's going to see an eighth of an inch. So, you know, you can take an eighth of an inch and three or four pickets, uh, you're doing good. You know, this is solid bar too. So and technically you don't need to weld it all the way around. Just probably a weld on either side of the picket is all you really need because it's, like I said, it is solid, but I don't know. I don't like to do that. I like to weld things all the way around. It's just a good look. In my opinion, it just looks nicer and looks cleaner and looks more complete. So I've got a little fold-out stool, a little swing-out stool, if you will. I don't, I don't know. You know, I've, I, I had a video on that uh, a couple years ago that I made. It's, it's attached to my welding table, and um, I use it's like my TIG welding station. You know, it's just what uh, I use when I'm TIG welding projects. But it doesn't work all the time because it's stationary. It swings in and out, so it's really in one location. So here, are what I'm doing is uh, it was good for a couple of them and then i stood up and i'm working my way down but ultimately i think what i do is uh i just clamp and just move it forward you can see you'll see me here i'm flipping it around right here and then i'm sitting down right here and this is where i go ahead and i start and i move along and then i think i just move the uh move the the, the gate down to accommodate all that you know, as easy as you can get to do things, as comfortable as you can get when you're TIG welding, at least for me, you know, I'm getting older and, 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 and you know, it's, I like to be as comfortable and steady as I possibly can. I also like to cut my filler rod. You see they come in 36 inches. I like to cut them in half. They're a little bit more manageable than that long 36 inch piece. Um, I've just something that I've always done. Still trying to master that uh, feeding the filler wire with your thumb and finger. I'm working on it. I'll get there eventually. I gotta say, I was pretty much done at this point. It's a lot. There was a lot of time that I invested. Of course, I'm not filming every single aspect of the welding the pickets on because you can imagine it's four ways all the way around both sides. But you know, there it is. What it looks like when it's all welded out. You know, it's just a good look. I'm I'm happy with it. All right, so here's these well-known bullet hinges. They are aluminum, and uh, I've never used these before. Well, this will be interesting. The very first thing that I found out is when you're 
When you're MIG welding steel, you can hold it in place like this and then use the gun and just tack it. Well, this, you, you need filler wire, foot pedal, you gotta hold the torch. You got, uh, I've got this super heavy duty glove on. It gets super hot, that didn't work. So now I got this clamp, that didn't work. So ultimately, I've just got these little metal spacers in there. It was just enough to prop it into place uh, and hold it steady enough that I was able to get a tack uh, both front and back side right here. That was about an hour's worth of work just to get that hinge tacked into that position right there. And I really wasn't certain how these things are going to weld on, but, uh, you know, like I said, once you got uh, the heat into it, things got going they started working pretty good and i'm reaching over the top reaching over top of, i can barely see what i'm doing right here um but i was able to get that done and then this is the uh lower hinge again i've got it propped up right here uh, enough just to get it uh straight enough to get a tack on it didn't take me that much time with this one once i figured out how uh how to do it all right over the top and there's the hinges they're welded on and they work pretty nice pretty smooth everything is good all right this is just a simple latch i'm putting this latch i'm just uh, screwing it in with some self-tapping screws right here it's zinc plated and i'm putting it right towards the very top and nothing real pretty or fancy just it's got to be something for us adults to be able to easy open this uh, gate gets used quite a bit uh during the day and so i just wanted to have something that was simple enough uh that was going to work good Again, this is just temporary for a year or so, and then it's probably going to come down. But uh, anyways, this was my experience of building an aluminum gate. It looks nice. It worked well. Um, I don't need to paint it. I probably won't. Uh, I'm just going to keep the aluminum look on there. And there it is. That post was able to stay strong enough. I didn't have to do any additional support to it. It's going to work fine. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.